Hello everyone, my name is Judd Wallace and I'm a staff technologist at Cohesity. Today I'm going to show you how you can use Cohesity's multi-layered security architecture through our out-of-the-box security capabilities to harden your Cohesity data protect environment. Cohesity enables you to easily secure your data protect environment with relative ease using some of our native security features such as role-based access controls, API keys, single sign-on, multi-factor authentication, data lock, and quorum. So let's dive in. I've logged into the Helios Global Dashboard, our single management UI, which allows us to perform multiple operations with integrated solutions for data protection, security, data mobility, data access, and data insights all from one convenient location. Next, I want to show you some of the built-in features to use when enforcing security hardening within Cohesity Data Protect. So let's head over to Settings and then Access Management. You can see we have access to manage users, roles, API keys, single sign-on, and multi-factor authentication. Uh, before I move on, I'd like to point out the support user and how it's separate from the admin user. We separate these accounts for security purposes to avoid giving the person doing support related tasks admin level access to the cluster. Also, we have no backdoor accounts used by support. Once you change the admin and support passwords, CoCD has no way of getting into the cluster. CoCD also provides a restricted secure shell that limits what anyone can do at the Linux CLI level of the cluster. So, I'm going to head all over to roles. And so Cohesity has two types of user roles that you can assign to specific users to control user access to the Cohesity clusters. First is standard roles, which Cohesity has six default system roles that can act as templates based on different user privileges. Admin, viewer, operator, SMB security, self-service data protection, and data security. Secondly, is custom roles. Cohesity administrators can create custom roles by picking up individual privileges. Users are assigned these roles will only have those privileges. Role-based access also gives you the ability to restrict user roles to granular functionality. You can restrict Cohesity user roles to specific workflows, thereby limiting what a user with a certain role can do on the cluster. For example, you can restrict specific users to assign privileges for performing backups or just monitoring activities. Secondly, you could restrict user access to a specific object. Based, based on individual adapter behavior, you can restrict users to have access only to specific objects. No other objects are visible to the user other than the objects that are assigned to it. Let's head on over to API keys. With API keys, we're able to generate keys for third-party integrations which allows you to authenticate an application or a script for reporting and workflow automation via Cohesity's REST API calls for Cohesity Data Protect. Let's go ahead and click on single sign-on. So with authentication server-based single sign-on, single sign-on is not only required to avoid password fatigue and simplicity, but it's also a crucial component of centralized credential and access control. Cohesity integrates with all major single sign-on services that support SAML-based standards, including Active Directory, LDAP, Azure Active Directory, Okta, Ping, Duo. In Cohesity, you can also enable multi-factor authentication workflows using the single sign-on workflow. So let's head over to multi-factor authentication. Multi-factor authentication is an additional layer of security used to verify the identity of the user. With Cohesity, you can use native MFA or configure MFA with external MFA providers such as Ping, Duo, Okta, and more. Cohesity also provides multiple ways to authenticate using MFA. We can use native multi-factor authentication, we can use a mobile authenticator app, email, or integration with external multi-factor authentication providers. So I went ahead on over to Cluster Manager and I want to pick one of our managed clusters so I can show you our data lock feature. So if I head on to data protection and then policies, and then I'm going to select one of our built-in policies and select edit. Here you can notice that data lock is not enabled on this, this policy, 
but if you were to enable it, this would provide you the worm time bound feature that ensures that your protected data, including local backups, archives, and replication cannot be modified or deleted. Once applied, a data locked snapshot will be deleted only after its retention period expires. A data lock prevents all users, excluding those who have the data security role in Coecity, from modifying or deleting any snapshots that were generated by a protection group. Only users with the authorized CoECD data security role can add, modify, or remove a data lock. Now, this is true for Data Protect on-prem or our SaaS-based offering. So let me go ahead and X out of this policy here. And I'm going to head over to Settings and then Summary. Here I would like to point out that we offer hardware and software encryption. We are FIPS 142 compliant when doing cluster-wide encryption and no special hardware or software is required. Now I'm gonna head over to Fort Knox and I wanna show you one of our features called Quorum. So I'm gonna click on security and Quorum. And so in order to prevent unilateral administrative changes without a multi-level approval, Data Cloud was designed with a unique feature called Quorum to comply with the principle of dual control. Quorum approvals are an authorization model within Data Cloud that ensures that sensitive or privileged operations requested by a Helios user must be approved by a quorum of approvers before those operations are executed. Quorum approvals help to eliminate the risk associated with unilateral admin tasks from highly privileged administrator, specifically to prevent a rogue, poorly trained or compromised administrator from performing sensitive or privileged operations on the data cloud without authorization or oversight. In Helios, you can define a group of users called a quorum group who can decide to approve whether to find operations initiated by a Helios user are allowed to be executed or not. As you can see, we include multi-layer security defenses natively to minimize the risk of backups from being a ransomware target or affected by another adverse event. By using zero trust security, including granular RBAC, multi-factor authentication, single sign-on, immutable snapshots, privileged access management, data lock, and quorum, you can ensure that your data will be secure. Thanks for watching and have a great day.